So it's about that time of the year where students are starting to look for where they are going to live next year. So since a lot of you will be going out and looking for houses and flats, I thought you might find it useful if I were to share with you some of the stories of the times that I went house hunting. I've been house hunting twice now for two different things in two different cities. I first went looking for a house share in Bath, and then I went looking for a studio flat in Bristol, where I currently am right now. In the description down below, I have linked to you a blog post that I've created that should give you advice for looking for houses. And also linked to the description down below are a load of daily vlogs from the times where I actually went house hunting so you can watch me go and look around houses on the actual day instead of having me tell you about it after. But since the blog is very informative and to the point and formal I thought I'd make this video just a casual story time with Jamie video all about house hunting. Every time I've went house hunting I've made sure that I've organized between 6 and 12 different houses to go and look around. I've made sure that they're all in an acceptable location and an acceptable price range and I've made sure that I can reasonably get from point A to point B in the time frame between the viewings. This is really important especially if you're going house hunting in a completely different city because when I was house hunting in Bristol I had to train over to Bristol and then walk for literally miles and as you walk towards one of the properties that you were going to look at the estate agent will ring you and say oh someone's just bought that one do you want to have a look at this one you've got to have enough room in your schedule to be able to shift it around and it's a really stressful time in your life this is especially true when you don't know the city at all you've got to walk from here to there your phone battery's dying so you can't google maps it when we were house hunting in bath it wasn't really that hard we only went once or twice and on the second time we found somewhere that was big enough cheap enough it was basically perfect until we moved in and then we realized there were slugs and snails and mice and it was freezing cold all of the time. And I'm trying to think of other issues it had. And to be honest with you, that's about it. Apart from the fact that the landlords would come in and check on the house every single month, which absolutely drove us crazy. And that's crazy considering that in this place, the landlord has only entered the place twice. And that was the day I got the keys and the time I locked myself in the bathroom. And he came to the rescue to save me. But yeah, I think that's an important thing to remember as well. Not only do you want to try and find what problems there are with the house you're going to go and look at, you also want to try and find what problems there are with the landlord and the estate agent selling it to you. My landlord, this year was absolutely great. When I moved in I realised the mattress was really uncomfortable and I realised that the oven was uh, like a slant <laughs> and I just sent them an email and in two days they just came around and just corrected it. But that's enough about that. What I want to talk to you now is about size. Size is a very important thing when it comes to house hunting because you don't want something too small where you're going to be cramped and you can't comfortably live there but you don't want somewhere too big where you just kind of drift around in it you know. The problem with that house last year was that it was so big that it was just a pain in the balls to heat and it's odd to think that something can be too big but when I was looking for houses this year we went to a flat that was only like £15 a month more expensive than this but I could have a completely separate bedroom and have a living room and a corridor and a big bathroom and I just went in there and I thought this is really big and it's really cheap but what have I actually got to fill it with because all I really have is my desk so I would have to go there and I'd have to buy a TV I'd have to buy stuff just to fill the space just to have a reason to use the living room so I think it's really important to make sure that you don't get somewhere too big just because it, you can afford it if you can find somewhere cheaper and more comfortable then by all means go for that. This place is the Goldilocks flat. It looks small, but that isn't too big to feel like you're all alone and stuff, and there is just enough space to move around and do everything I want. But let's talk about some of the times where I've had bad experiences house hunting. Two different times spring to mind. But we went and looked around a top floor flat of a house, and it was a really weird layout. It was far too big. It was a really long corridor, a big kitchen here, and then you had two big rooms, like a living room and a, and a bedroom. And it was really dark, and you walked in, and you just went... <laughs> Hmm, what's that smell? We walked into the kitchen, and in the middle of the floor, there was a dehumidifier, which is used to suck in moisture in the air and remove damp and stuff like that, if you didn't know. And me and Dad looked at it, and we go, we had one of these when our boiler burst. I know exactly what that is. So we said to the estate agent, we said, uh, hey, mate, what's that there? Oh, that, that's just a space heater. We used it because no one's been in the flat for a while, so we thought we'd just heat it up for you. That looks remarkably like a dehumidifier to me, mate. And he just goes... <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Just caught you. Don't try and lie to me. Something to be aware of. Estate agents are always willing to gloss over all of the bad details. They're trying to make a sale at the end of the day. They're not going to tell you the truth all of the time. Some, some of them will. Some of them will be honest with you. Some of them will try and pass off a dehumidifier and a place with damp problems as somewhere that's just a little bit cold and we thought we'd heat it up for you. But another flat we went into, and I'm going to say flat here in inverted commas, we rung up the estate agent and I was looking for studio or one bed flats. We have a two bed flat for you in your price range. We may as well look. I'm literally just lining up as many as I possibly can here. But we go to the flat and the flat wasn't a flat at all. It was a house share with a top floor. And in the top floor, you go up some stairs, you open the door and then there's like a tiny little kitchen and two bedroom. There is no lock on that door. So it is a house share. It isn't a flat 
that you happen to have to go through like a corridor or two. You walk through the house and you just go in the loft. And firstly, the ceilings were about up to here. So you walk around like this. And it was the darkest, most dingiest place you've ever been to in your entire life. But we asked, hold on mate, where's, where's the bathroom? And he goes, um... I don't know. And the bathroom was so small, he couldn't even find it. He legitimately didn't know where it was. And he was trying to show us around the place like it was a really good idea. And what he was essentially doing was selling me two different bedrooms within the same house share. And literally in a cupboard the size of, like, Harry Potter's bedroom underneath the stairs. In a cupboard that big, he opens a door and there's a shower where it is literally like, you. I'm not even kidding you, you would have to be a dwarf to get into that shower. And then literally just opposite the shower, made for dwarves, there was a toilet where I'm assuming when you're in it, your knees are in the shower. That's how small it is. Where's the sink, mate? Oh, you'd have to use the kitchen sink. So he looks at him and he looks at us and we go, so how much is this place again? 600 and something pound a month? So it would have been 300 each for each room? Mate, you're having our fucking pants down. What is this absolute shithole? <laughs> and he looked really offended, but he knew deep down that he was trying to sell a horrendous flat and no one would buy that as a flat on its own. People might go as a house share because it's cheap. Because each individual room is only £300 a month, which is relatively cheap. But let's talk about good flats, because they're not all bad. When I came to Bristol, I set my heart on three different flats. The first of which got away from me. And I think it was probably the second time that I came down flat hunting. And it's literally just around the corner. It was the same price as this. It was much bigger. It was a much deeper room. There was a completely separate doored off kitchen. And there was a corridor off of the main room where a much bigger bathroom than my bathroom lived, basically. And I even had like a little walk-in closet too. And the room would have been perfect. It had a window like this. And I'd be able to put the bedroom over there. And I walked in and I'm like, right, my desk is going there. My bed's going there. I will film videos there. I will do this there. And I fell in love with it. When it came to me putting the deposit on that, table they turned around to me and said are you 25 and I go no I'm 20 they go oh we were looking for someone 25 how about I give you half a year's worth of rent in one go and that would have literally crippled my bank account now we're looking for someone 25 or older this is, well you could have told me that before I was signing the contracts putting the money on the goddamn table come on now tell me on the viewing go mate how old are you oh it's gonna be too you're not too young mate too young but then the other two places that I really liked were this one and another one which is closer to Bristol Temple Meads. And that one was in a tower block of loads of different flats. It was more expensive than this by about 50 pound a month, but it was much newer. It was a little bit smaller, I would say, if I can remember it rightly, but it was newer, it was posher, it was nicer, I think, as a space. But then this one was both cheaper closer to where I'm going to work, not too far away from town where I can't walk there. And it was between those two where I literally went home and I was like, right, if I don't get this one, I will instantly ring and get the other one. And I think what clinched it was not only the price, although that was a massive swing for this one, but also the location. And I think that's one of the most important things when you're looking for a place, is make sure that the location is close to where you need to go to. Sure, you can find an absolutely fantastic place for really cheap, right in the middle of Buttfuck Nowhere. But you're in the middle of Buttfuck Nowhere. How are you going to get to where you need to be at uni or at work? in the middle of town. Are you gonna get four buses there? But I think that's all of the stories that I wanted to share with you today about house hunting. Like I say, there is a blog post in the description down below where there is a lot more advice about what you should look for, how you should organize yourself, what questions you should ask people. And there is also a link to all of the daily vlogs for the days that I went house hunting both in Bath and in Bristol. If you have any house hunting stories, then please share them with me in the comment section down below. And if you are currently going house hunting and you haven't quite found a house yet, don't worry. There are plenty of houses. Just make sure that you are 100% certain of who it is that you want to live with because that is the most important thing. Making sure that you are happy living with all of your friends and all of your friends are happy living with each other. Then and only then should you go house hunting. I hope you've enjoyed this video ladies and gentlemen and I will catch you later.